when money starts flowing to you, it comes in such great quantity, so effortlessly that you begin to wonder where money has been throughout the lean years. Real money is big money. And big money flows to you effortlessly through multiple channels in ever increasing quantities on a continuous basis. When you look at the lives of the wealthy people in the world, you can see for yourself that the money in their lives cannot be justified by physical effort. You probably work more than some of them. It cannot be justified by education. You're probably more qualified than some of them. It cannot be justified by gender or skin color or language or nationality because there are wealthy people of all genders, all skin colors, and all nationalities, and all languages. In fact, all of us have the same 24 hours in a day. So there is not enough hours in a day to justify why some people should be billionaires if the only way of making money was by clocking in and clocking out like most poor and middle class people do on a daily basis. The reason why you are taking this course is that you are looking for alternative solutions. You're looking for alternative ideas. You're looking for an alternative experience. And yes, I promise you an alternative experience. You see, you cannot earn enough money. The people who live paycheck to paycheck always have more month at the end of their money because there's a limit to how many hours you can work per day. Even if you work 24 hours a day, you can work only for 24 hours. And there's a limit to how much you can earn per hour. Usually someone else fixes that rate for you. So if you live in the paradigm that money is a thing that you are supposed to be working for, then automatically there's a limit to how much money you can have. Unfortunately, we live in an economic system, a capitalist system that has no mercy on you when it comes to bills. Whether it's the high tuition cost or the high medical bills or the high rent or the senseless amounts that you spend on electricity bills, telephone bills, cable television, and so on, internet. The economy has no mercy on your wallet. So why should you have mercy on the amount of money you are receiving? It's probably not a matter of choice. You, you, you have a limit to how much money you are receiving. You are your life experience is limited to the size of your paycheck because you think that you don't have a choice. You think you don't have a choice because you have the wrong idea about money. You have the wrong idea about money because you are living from a false identity that was socially conditioned into you and this identity operates a paradigm that is creating your experience on a habitual autopilot mode without you being the wiser. You think that money is value and because money is value, you are supposed to be working for money. You are supposed to be chasing money. You are supposed to be needing money. This cause will rewire your mind because in, the, in, in this introductory unit, I will walk you through the mechanisms through which your false identity, your present identity was constructed for you. And I will show you how this false identity is operating the paradigm, the autopilot system that is habitually creating your limited experience. And by understanding how those things work, you will free yourself from their clutches because 
the only thing that holds you captive is ignorance. In the first unit of this course, I will take you on a history journey, the evolution of money. You will see how the idea of money started and how the idea of money has evolved over time to the cryptocurrency that is now shaking the world. The importance of that lesson would be to demystify the concept of money so that you can see that the thing that you have been chasing as money is not actually money. In the second unit of this course, I will use three theoretical models. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, the value pentagram that I created, and the success code that I created to show you that it is actually you that is value because you are a divine being, you are a conscious being, you are a spiritual being, you are the individualization of God. This universe was created for you and you are here to use all these things that are found in a material universe. So by understanding yourself as value and repositioning yourself in this relationship that you have with money, you will regain your power so that it is money that starts chasing you instead of you chasing money. In the next um, unit, we will look at the real nature of money. The real nature of money as energy in motion seeking value to reinforce the lesson in the previous unit that shows you that you are that value that money is supposed to be chasing. Then in the final unit, we will look at some 14 myths about money that have been programmed into us as a result of the culture we grew up in and that I mean, when you understand and debunk, you become free from. So the myths about money are closely related with the social conditioning of your identity because the money idea is part and parcel of your social conditioning. So when you debunk those myths, it's like breaking the chains that have been holding you captive. So let us dive right in and uh, see how your social identity was constructed. I am Godfrey G. Aso, and I'm really, really proud and excited to welcome you to this course, Becoming a Quantum Magnet for Money. This is a very disruptive concept and by the time you are through with this course, I bet that you will not recognize yourself again. I challenge you to make sure that you, you immerse yourself in these concepts. Watch the videos over and over and over. Remember that you got to where you are through repetition, the programming of your environment. So it's not in one day that you're going to miraculously change. No. It's work that you have to do to re-engineer a new identity, rewire your brain, re-orchestrate your belief system, re-engineer your habits, your behaviors, so that you can start receiving new results. And the new results we are focusing on is that you should be attracting money in abundance on a consistent basis. So how was your social identity programmed? There are six mechanisms through which this happened. The first one is what I call pre-genetic orchestration. You and I are aware that you are not just flesh and bone. The reason why we are able to communicate is because you are a conscious being. You have a soul. And 
you also know that this soul was not this soul did not originate in your mother's womb it's your body that originate in your mother's womb again depending on your belief system you probably know that when you die your body will go to the grave but your essence will live on so no matter what you call it whether your essence your spirit or your soul we are aware that there's more to us than this physical body question is that essence that you call you where did it come from so that is where your programming began because this soul or mind or subconscious self that you carry was orchestrated through your ancestry from the collective consciousness of humanity so if you imagine all the seven point something billion human beings on earth we are like an ocean of consciousness and each person is an individuation of that collective consciousness and how individuation occurred is through the funneling of this collective consciousness through your ancestry the second mechanism of conditioning is similar to the first one so just as your ancestry funneled the con collective consciousness to form this individuation called your soul in that same way your physical ancestry funneled the gene pool of humanity to form the specific combination of genes that you inherited from your mother and your father so look at it this way you inherited your genes from your mother and father who inherited theirs from their mother and father who inherited theirs from their mother and father who inherited theirs from their mother and father and if you continue you know expanding outward you end up with all of humanity so basically it's very easy to understand that both your soul and your body are the result of the funneling of the collective consciousness to give your soul and the collective gene pool of humanity to bring about your body so the third level of or the third mechanism of conditioning is the um, what we call epigenetic control ap means above or beyond so beyond the genes when you were in your mother's womb you were part of your mother's physiology basically you were like an organ inside your mother's body what this means is that everything your mother went through was part of you her thoughts her feelings her hurts her joys her fears her ambitions her diet the drugs the alcohol everything she consumed you lived on that so your mother is the first environment that welcomed you to earth and through epigenetic programming you got conditioned by your mother the third mechanism of conditioning is parental mirroring during your first five six years in life you basically did not have an identity have you noticed that children speak in the third person they usually speak in passive in the passive voice uh, clara wants to pee uh, peter wants to eat because they don't yet have an ego right their own social identity is still being constructed so in that meanwhile their subconscious mind is wide open they basically magnetize everything in their environment that's what we call mirroring so they don't learn through logical reasoning like adults do they simply mirror their environment this is why it is possible for a child a five-year-old child to be let's say playing a computer game watching tv at the same time and overhearing the parents conversation at the same time this is how it's possible to meet a four-year-old child who speaks four languages this is why it is possible that you leave your smartphone and your child unlocks it and you cannot remember when 
you ever unlock your phone around that child. So babies are geniuses because their subconscious mind is wide open. They basically magnetize or mirror their environment. So it is during those first five, six years, maybe seven years of life that personality is formed. And you will realize that the quality of the home usually scripts the destiny of the child. That is true for everyone until you get to a level where you are able to hack that conditioning and rewire yourself and create a new identity for yourself, which is what we are doing in this course. After parental mirroring, we now move to environmental programming. And how environmental programming works is that the social tools of education, they program us through the curriculum. Religion programs us through dogma and creeds. Um, our native traditions and cultures program us through stereotypes. The media programs us through propaganda. And of course, the governments program us through the economic systems that they create as a means of fulfilling their political ambitions, which most of the times is about them and not you. So finally, we get to the sixth mechanism of conditioning, which is auto-suggestive um, feedback, or what some people call neuro-linguistic programming. This is where I want us to really pay close attention because this is what you have power over. Your pre-genetic orchestration, <laughs> you were not there. Your genetic selection, you had no choice in it. Your epigenetic programming, you had no choice in it. Parent parental mirroring, you had no choice in it. Environmental programming, you had no choice in it. But auto-suggestion is entirely within your control. And fortunately, it is the most powerful of the conditioning mechanisms. The reason why I am teaching you the first five mechanisms is so that when you are practicing auto-suggestion, you should intentionally know which virus you are trying to erase from your subconscious mind. Depending on the quality of life you have now and the quality of your parentage and the quality of your culture and the quality of the environment you grew up in. Different people have different intensities of work to do on themselves. The important thing is for you to have the tools that you need to do that work and have the willingness to do it. So how does auto-suggestive feedback work? Like I mentioned earlier, through this social conditioning, you now have an identity, a social identity, a physical identity, which is essentially your false identity because your authentic identity is your spiritual self, which most of the times you're not aware of, but which through this course you will awaken. So this conditioned identity operates a software, a subconscious belief system that we call in psychology a paradigm. Think of a paradigm in this way. Have you ever been in a plane? If yes, there is always a time in mid-flight when the plane is on autopilot but you don't realize it. The, what makes it possible to put a plane on autopilot is because the flight path of that plane has been, has been programmed in the form of a software. And when you put that plane on autopilot, it follows that path. Now, it never goes on a straight line because it keeps wavering up, down, up, down, up, down. But there's a mechanism in that plane that will always bring it to the path that it's supposed to follow. That mechanism is called 
a cybernetic mechanism. So the principle of cybernetics simply means a program that defines a path for something. And no matter how that thing wavers from that path, that program always brings it back to that path. In fact, this is in alignment with one of Newton's laws of motion, which says that an object that is at rest will remain at rest until an external force acts on it. Or, an object in uniform motion will maintain its uniform motion in the same direction unless an external force acts on it to change its direction or stop it from moving. So that is what we call the law of inertia. And in human life, inertia is your comfort zone, your programming, your paradigm, your subconscious cybernetic system. So the paradigm that your subconscious mind is running as its automatic software is what is responsible for the results you are getting because it creates your life on an automatic or habitual mode. What you do not realize is that 95% of everything you do every day is habitual. And since it's being habitually created by your paradigm, every day is basically the previous day in disguise. And that is why you end up with exactly the same results. And then you're wondering what happened. No matter how much you study, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much effort you put in, your subconscious cybernetic system will always bring you back to the same result. Why? Because your life will never change unless you replace the software that is running your life. So this mental software, this paradigm, this subconscious belief system it gives birth to your dreams and expectations and your thoughts. When you think the same thoughts over and over, they generate a feeling. The feeling triggers physiologic reactions, right? That orchestrate your brain through um, neuroplasticity, orchestrate your heart through heart intelligence, you know, orchestrate your flight fight response system or your feelings of well being and health and joy, depending on the quality of emotions. And these feelings, what they do is that they push you into action. So every action you have ever taken in your life was a response to a feeling. And every feeling you've ever had in your life was a response to a thought. And every thought you have ever had in your life was the response or was the inner working of your paradigm. So your paradigm generates your thoughts. Your thoughts generate your feelings. Your feelings orchestrate your actions and your actions create your results. Now, when you get those results, you respond to them or you react to them. And this reaction reinforces your paradigm and the cycle continues. So do you see the loop, the auto-suggestive feedback mechanism or your psycho-cybernetic mechanism? Your paradigm is the mental software, the subconscious software that is being operated by your socially conditioned identity that paradigm gives rise to your thoughts and your words those thoughts and words orchestrate your feelings your feelings orchestrate your actions and your actions create your results then your response or reaction to those results reinforces that paradigm and the cycle continues therefore the breakthrough you're looking for has nothing to do with you studying more and getting more certificates. 
it has nothing to do with you moving from one miracle pastor to the other it has nothing to do with success seminars and books and um, working extra hours it's about changing your identity some teachers focus on you changing your paradigm but who is changing the paradigm it takes a higher law to overwrite a lower law so you cannot change your paradigm from a lower state of being you can only change your paradigm if you step into your authentic identity so you step into your authentic identity by outgrowing this socially conditioned identity and you outgrow your socially uh, conditioned identity through an expansion of awareness and that is why this lesson is so crucial your expanded awareness is all it takes to orchestrate your new identity to step into your authentic identity when you step into your authentic identity your paradigm will automatically change and the rest of this course is about helping you shatter those old paradigms because the moment you recognize the falseness of the false it automatically loses its power over you and since you are by nature divine you're by nature abundant it is more important to wake up from the illusion than to struggle about uh, getting money or success because when you wake up from the illusion automatically the reality is what remains right so money is a struggle in your life because you are functioning from a false identity which is running a corrupted uh, software called your paradigm and that paradigm was programmed into you you know through the myths that you have about money you know which are themselves part of your socially constructed identity so in the rest of this course we will shatter those myths we will review the story of money the evolution of money to show you that the thing you are chasing is not money we will reinforce in you the idea that you are value and we will show you the true nature of money when all of this is put together then you would have a new identity that runs a new paradigm a new software that generates new ideas about money and puts you in a state of synergy with the laws of abundance so that you become a magnet for money so in order to wrap up this segment let me introduce to you the exercise that we will be doing on a daily basis so i will repeat this exercise at the end of each unit of this course and i encourage you to make it your daily practice in fact practice this exercise for at least 90 days non-stop if you want to really repolarize yourself to become the magnet that will be attracting money effortlessly through multiple channels in ever increasing quantities on a continuous basis so our five step formula says that step one you spiritualize step two you mentalize step three you empathize step four you personalize and step five you actualize to spiritualize means that you raise your awareness from your sense consciousness and your your fixation on circumstances 
to spiritual awareness. Spirit simply means immaterial. So when we use the word spirit in this course, it has nothing to do with religion. We live in a material universe, but we are not material beings. We are conscious beings. So the domain of energy or spirit or, um, or consciousness is where the power is because it is that domain that gives rise to the material domain. So you need to create a practice where maybe you set aside 30 minutes per day to review inspired content, whether you're reading a book or you're taking a course like this one or you're watching uh, a, a video on YouTube, create time to spend with, to engage with spiritual content every day. And when you receive that knowledge, meditate on it so that it becomes a part of you. Carry out any activity that will help that knowledge sink into your heart. The goal of meditation or any spiritual activity you choose is to awaken the emotional equivalent of the spiritual idea that you have acquired. That is how you spiritualize. The next step is to mentalize. To mentalize means to have a mental picture of the good that you desire. You need to know what you want if you are to get what you want. And we know that most people don't know what they want. That's why they don't get what they want. So to mentalize means that you have a mental picture of what you want. And uh, when it comes to money and uh, specifically for this course, the standard I have set for this course is that you should set a goal of turning your annual income into your monthly income. Everybody knows what that is. So, you know, because wealth is relative, a million dollars may be a big deal to somebody and it may be just launch money to another person. So, no matter where you are in the world, no matter your financial state, we can all have a point of reference. Turn your annual income into your monthly income. So, write that down as your intention. Then, Conceive of a scene that implies that you already have that money. If you had that money here and now, what kind of house will you be living in? What kind of car will you be driving? What kind of work will you be doing? What kind of people will you be interacting with? What kind of conversation will you be having with your friends or your family? So pick one scene, a very short and concise and colorful scene that implies that you already have that money and hold that picture in your mind play it as a mental movie every night as you are falling asleep the third step is that you empathize to empathize means to become emotionally one with something or someone so the person that you're becoming emotionally one with is your wealthy self the future rich version of you and becoming emotionally one with that future self is easy because see, when you pick a scene that implies that you already have the money you are waiting for then all you need to do is to look for the emotional counterpart of that scene so if you can see how it looks like you can feel how it feels like, right? So immerse yourself in that feeling. So as you go to bed every night, hold, play the mental movie that implies, of the scene that implies that you already have that money and then immerse yourself in the feeling that corresponds with that scene. Feel the feeling that would be yours if you already had that money. Step four, personalize. As you go about your waking day, your conscious waking activities, look for some of those attributes that 
the wealthy version of you would normally be manifesting if you had the money that you are waiting for now if you had the money that you're desiring now how would you talk how would you dress how would you walk how would you treat people so pick one very simple attribute of that wealthy self that you can mirror what mirroring does is that it imprints in your DNA the qualities of that wealthy version of you. And this is crucial because becoming a magnet to money means becoming, uh, being in a state of coherence. When your mind, your heart, your body, and your actions are all in synergy, then you are a magnet that's what polarization is about so pick something as simple as let's say okay if you were wealthy you probably you probably would be more generous so giving is one of the attributes that your wealthy self would naturally have not so but good news is that right now no matter your financial situation you always have something to give to someone. So create a practice that says, okay, every day you will find something that you can share to create value in the lives of someone else. When you share that thing, you create in yourself the conviction of abundance. And we live in a vibrational universe that communicates with our feelings. It does not care about the size of the house or the amount of the money we are looking for. It cares about our feelings. So when you create the feeling of abundance, the universe gives you more abundance. Because the way the universe works is that those who have more is given, right? To them that have, more is given. So you can use the little things that you already have to create in yourself the feeling of abundance. And when you create that feeling to a certain critical degree, the universe picks it up and starts giving you more abundance. So this is a very scientific process. As you can see, it logically flows from your spiritual awareness to your mental pictures, to your heart uh, coherence, to your physical programming. And finally, the last stage is receiving. Now, the people who have the wrong notion about money feel that money is a thing that they need to work for. So their idea of work is hustling to pay the bills, right? All of us, we work. But the people who are living in that old paradigm of working for money they go out every day chasing dollars because they think that it is through their chasing that money comes to them. But in this course, you are training yourself to become a magnet for money so that money will flow to you effortlessly through multiple channels in ever increasing quantities on a continuous basis. Therefore, work to you is simply the art of receiving and how do you do the kind of work through which you receive? It has to be inspired action. So if you practice the first four exercises on this program on a daily basis, you will eventually get to the point where you will start receiving inspired ideas. So all you need to do is listen to your intuition, follow your bliss. Because when you follow your bliss, you will the universe itself would orchestrate you, right? In a way that you will find yourself in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right things that will result in money in your bank account. So those are the five uh, steps on our quantum manifestation system and this uh, exercise we will repeat it at the end of each unit of this course and I strongly encourage you 
to master it and make it your daily practice. If you can do this for 90 days, 90 days, the reason why you need like 90 days is because you are trying to overwrite a script that has been written throughout your life. You're trying to recreate an identity that has been programmed for your entire life on earth. You're trying to create a new money story to replace the one that you've been living all your life. So if you believed in magic, you wouldn't be taking this course. What you have seen so far is that our approach is very pedagogic, very scientific, and that's why the word quantum appears on the course title because quantum is about energy and measurement and we are here for concrete results but those concrete results will come only if you do the work so get to work